Hello, this is Faith of Faith and Books. Um, I was tagged by Sean Standfast uh, to do the classics tag. So I'm going to do this and put it up for Tag Tuesday. And then I think that's it until maybe Friday. Um, I might try to do a, a wrap up because I'm going to try to really do a lot of reading this week. But this is also a busy week because it's Holy Week. And it's also Passover. We celebrate both Jewish and Christian um, holidays. And Passover begins Wednesday night. So um, it's going to be a busy week in that way. We're going to try and muddle through, even though we've got this coronavirus thing that's apparently peaking. Um, it, I read you shouldn't even go to the grocery store, so I'm going to try and make do with what we've got. Anyway, I'm going to do this uh, classics tag, and, um, and thank you, Sean, for tagging me. Um, some of these, I feel like I'm going to be repeating myself, but, um, so anyway, let me get started. Uh, the first prompt is an overhyped classic you really didn't like, and I would say Madame Bovary, and I've mentioned this before, I think in comment sections, maybe I've mentioned it in a video, but, um, I have a thing against adultery in literature, especially when it's supposed to make you feel sympathetic to the character, maybe, or that they sort of have been driven to it. Because I just, my response is always sort of, oh, get over yourself. <laughs> um, and I, I'm not very sympathetic to adultery. Because it's, you know, you're breaking a vow. You're being disloyal. But I don't, it's very hard for me to condone um, you know, being traitorous to someone else, to your children, uh, even if your relationship with your spouse isn't the most romantic or, or fulfilling, you know, get over yourself. So, Madame Bovary, I just found her annoying and shallow. I read it a long time ago, and it really turned me off to Flaubert, but ever since, um, I've been watching a bookish. Um, I've been thinking, well, maybe I need to rethink my uh, opinion of Flaubert based on one book that I read a long time ago um, that just dealt with an issue that I have trouble with. Um, and Sean Sandfass has been reading another book. I can't remember the name. It's the name of two gentlemen with French names. Uh, and he's saying he really enjoyed it. So he's really enjoying reading that particular book by Flaubert. So maybe I'll give Flaubert another try. However, I would say that I never understood why Madame Bovary had the reputation it had. I thoroughly disliked the book. And I also agree with uh, Sean on his opinion of the, the Red and the Black by Stendhal. Hideous book. Couldn't stand it. Um, anyway, next prompt is favorite time period to read about. And I go on Jags where I enjoy different time periods. Um, so, also, I'm not sure what is meant by classics here. Is it just, you know, books that have good reputations? Um, or is it, are we looking at, you know, um, real classics from, you know, 2,000 years ago? Um, I just go through, I mean, I went through a period where I loved Holocaust literature um, and Cold War literature. And, um, you know, I also really enjoyed medieval literature. And, um, you know, I'd like to read more of the ancients. Um, so I don't think I have a particular period. I mean, Probably the most reading I've done has been of the Victorian era, simply because that was the heyday of the, of the novel. And I like to read novels, and I'm an English speaker, so I tend to read Victorian novels. Um, but, but that's sort of by circumstance rather than by choice. So I don't know. I don't think I have a favorite um, time period. It just depends on my mood. Um, the third prompt is favorite fairy tale, and I think I have three. Uh, the first one is Great Claws and Little Claws, which is a kind of an obscure one, but I remember reading it as a child and being delighted with it. As I recall, uh, Little Claws, uh, there's these two men that live in a village, and Little Claws uh, kind of uh, gets bullied by Great Claws, 
And so he comes up with very clever ways to um, take, take the advantage over a uh, great clause. Um, so it's a real clever story. And I think all of these sort of have that theme where somebody, the underdog, figures out how to come out on top. Um, uh, I really love the story Puss in Boots. Uh, I love that cat. Um, and just the very clever way that he uh, manages to help the miller's son, um, you know, marry the princess and get rich and everything. And then the last one is the Bremen Town Musicians. I just found this story so charming. We used to have the most charming picture book of it, and I don't know where it went, but I read it to my kids over and over again. But I love the idea of these animals, you know, the rooster that's going to get, um, you know, put made into soup. He runs away, and then the horse that runs away, and these animals who have been rejected and are old, and they band together, and they wind up um, scaring off the robbers. Um, so that's a really charming tale, too. So Great Claws and Little Claws, Puss in Boots, and Bremen Town Musicians, I think, would be my three favorite fairy tales. Um, let's see, what classic do you feel most embarrassed about not having read yet? I mean, there's so many... I can't be embarrassed because, <laughs> I mean, I would I would have to go around being embarrassed all the time. There's so many classics that I haven't gotten to yet. Um, I do feel a regretful defeat um, about Moby Dick and War and Peace because I've tried both of those multiple times and just have never met with success. Um, and so I think those would probably be maybe um, come closest to feeling real emotion about uh, not having to, not having conquered them. So Moby Dick and, and War and Peace. Uh, top five classics you would like to read soon. I, I could only come up with four off the top of my head. I'm about to read Pilgrim's Progress, which is a classic that's been on my TBR, you know, for decades. A Bleak House is another one that I've been meaning to read for years. I'm determined to get to it this year um, so I own both of those I'm doing a year of reading one's own so I can't go out and buy stuff uh, but I do really want to read the Constellation of Philosophy and that's a book that I would like to go out and purchase and Crime and Punishment I would like to read that I tried that a long time ago got interrupted and never finished it um, and I can't think of a fifth one I know there's something out there, but I can't think of it right now. So only four. Pilgrim's Progress, Bleak House, The Constellation of Philosophy, but that's not going to happen this year. It'll happen next year. And Crime and Punishment. And that, if the libraries ever reopen, I could go and get it out of the library. Um, prompt number six, favorite modern book or series based on a classic? I thought about this a lot, and uh, I think it's going to be Till We Have Faces by C.S. Lewis, which is based on the story of Cupid and Psyche, and I really, really want to reread that. That's When I read it, uh, I don't know how many years ago, a decade ago, it just knocked my socks off. I just walked around in a fog for about a week from that book, and I've been meaning to reread it ever since, and I think this year I'm, gonna, I'm really going to do it. Uh, I, I just, I thought it was, I think it was my favorite. I love The Great Divorce, too. Um, but I think that might be um, my favorite C.S. Lewis. Um, okay, and the next prompt is favorite movie version or TV series based on a classic. And I have two. Uh, I have a movie and I have a series of the Pride and Prejudice uh, 1995 version with Jennifer Ellie and Colin Firth. I watch that so many times over and over again. So I think that's my favorite series um, adaptation of a classic. The other would be, uh, for a movie, would be Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Um, and that's sort of very loosely based on the Odyssey, but I absolutely love that movie. So I think those would be my two. Uh, the worst classic to movie adaptation, I, I said this together in another, I, I said this before, in another tag, um, and the Scarlet Letter um, with Demi Moore. Oh my goodness, it's absolutely unwatchable. <laughs> Worst thing ever. Uh, and that's such a great book. Uh, just uh, people who don't know what they're doing have no sensibilities or intelligence trying to do a movie. Very bad. Uh, 
prompt number nine, favorite edition you'd like to collect more classics from. So I don't really think in terms of editions, I'm not that sophisticated. I'm learning from BookTube. Um, but one thing that I have actually tried to, in a very half-hearted, disorganized way, I collect more of are these um, uh, illustrated junior library books. This is Heidi. This is from my childhood and it's been damaged. You can see somebody cut it off and wrote in it. Uh, it might have been me as a child. Something book. Got my last name. Paula. Oh, my sister Paula wrote in it. Oh my gosh, here we go. Paula Brophy. <laughs> But anyway, um, I love these. I love the illustrations. Let me see if I can find a nice... There we go. And wait, there's some color plates in there. Yeah, oh, I love this picture of Heidi dreaming when she's in the city and she's dreaming of being back on the mountain. Um, but also just even each page has like a little illustration here. But I love these additions. And I actually bought a couple of newer ones. Um, so I'd like, I'd like to have a whole collection of the uh, junior, illustrated junior library, it's called. Um, but the other thing that I've wanted is, um, I would love to have all of Winston Churchill's writings. Um, I think that would be a really cool thing to collect. I don't know if they've all been published by a particular publisher in, in you know, some beautiful edition, but I think that would be a really neat thing. Uh, so, and the next prompt is an under-hyped classic you've, you'd recommend to everyone. And mine is Precious Bane. I think the author's name is Mary Webb. I think she's sort of Edwardian. Uh, but, oh, it's such a beautiful story about a young woman with a hair lip and how she finds true love. And it's written in such a... Uh, it's really um, nature-oriented, the, the nature writing and the sort of mystical element of the book. And the characters are wonderful. Uh, it's, it's really, really, I, to me, I, I discovered it, I just, I think I came across it in a used bookstore and I just sort of opened it up and, and started reading and thought, oh, this looks really good. and. And then I, I read it and just adored it. And I've run across some people who know, but most people haven't heard of it. And I think it's really an unsung classic. Really, really great book. I've read it a couple of times at least now. Anyway, so those are my answers to the 10 prompts. Um, and I'll put the prompts below. And if you have not done this particular tag, consider yourself tagged. Um, and I will see you hopefully on Friday. Have a wonderful week. Stay healthy. And if you are religious, have a, have a, um, a holy Passover or a, um, a beautiful, blessed holy week. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.